Tim Relinquish here with a YCS Houston tournament report. Um, as you guys know, I said in my previous video that I was going to YCS Houston, which was just this past weekend. I just came back about three hours ago off the flight, and I'm here at Tate's. Uh, it was a good event. It was highly attended. It was over 800 players. So there's like 10 rounds of Swiss, and yeah, top 32 and all that stuff. Um, also, quick shout out to Andrew Torres from PPG that actually won the event, not playing Monkey Board. <laughs> Um, that was a funny debacle situation, but um, the the tournament was quietly it was a lot. It was a great, great tournament, great outcome. Um, I did play Artifact Monarchs, like I said I would. Um, um, the deck really hasn't changed that much. If not, it's still the same. But what did change was my sideboard. They got it ready for the YCS. Um, I did day two, round one. I lost against Mermails game three. I break super hard. Um, game two played against Mermels. It was not Mermels. Uh, round two I played against Monarchs and you drew a draw. And then for the next five or six rounds I went undefeated. Played against the Pepe and Draco Piles and what the deck was exactly designed for, it had no problem having those matchups. But until round eight, I dropped another match against Draco Piles. Didn't try anything really. Then day two played against a friend from, from here, Florida, Nick Tarago. Well, shout out to Nick. Um, and last game three didn't drop playable hand. So um, it was it was not bad. But it was a wonderful experience. Give me a bit outside about the deck and what is it to look forward to in the future. Um, as far as the top 32, there were 13 performer piles that came out, which was, I mean, the balance did come on the Friday and I was effective today, Monday. So they, they went out. How strong there was one PK fire, two BAs, five cosmos, two XC monarchs. Um, I want to talk about that for a little bit. Apparently, there was a, there's a new style of monarchs where it's like seeds where you play eat teleport, but the, the, the twist about it is you play overdrive teleport. Which, um, if people are not familiar with overdrive teleport, is when it's tribute summon, you can pay 2000 life points and bring out two level three. Um, psychic monsters from your deck. So if you were playing double ghost soldier, bring them out and just synchroing and doing all kinds of shenanigans with it. And then you had the regular domain monarch on top. <coughs> One Atlantean Mermill that made it into top 16 and lost. And one in front of a player. Then pretty much he played against a bunch of a lot of BS today, that day. So um, that's pretty much it. The event was nice. Um, I also went to the UDS. Uh, I leave it due to some circumstances, but um, pretty much it was fun. So um, I'll go show you guys the deck profile here. Like I said, so I played our five monarchs and it's like how it was before. Three ether, three Erebus. I really don't need to go too much into these cards here. self explanatory basically the best monarchs in the deck. Um, three scythe. Now the key about playing scythe is um, I'm playing triple sanctum as well, and this card is just really basically a. There's several ways I could pop it because I play double MST, one ignition, and um, two Karaz. Because I could bring out the Karaz from the ether, I pop it. So technically, it's just it's just it slows down my opponent, and make, so I can still have a card advantage. Also, I slow them down from my turn because performer piles need their extra deck for them to continue playing. PK fire, you, you shut them down. They open up no traps and have monsters. I practically win the next turn. I set up a board. So this card is just basically the. That's, it, it did its job for the, fairly for the entire West. Yes, it, it wasn't bad at all, really. Um, this is the worst card ever. I'm Karaz. Like most of the time when I'm um, when I was siding on my cards, I sided like, like three to five. I always side on one copy, and then game game two, I'm seeing the one copy that's left in the deck. So I mean, it, it was kind of frustrating, but I still managed to play through it. Um, as far as for the Vazels, that's it for Monarch, but these are the Vazels. Two Edia, two Edios. Um, I did try playing three Edia, and I, it ended up kind of being really bad, really. So I just kept it at a 2 2 ratio. Um, nothing changed. It's just the same. So kept it at that. Um, then <coughs> last uh, artifact, Monster Rush and Monotech. Monotech got started out every game because it's really great game one, but game two, we don't want to try as a one of. That's all the monsters. Um, then go to spells, the pathisms, 
three German cold rest on fourth. How to get it, how to get my four and stuff. Um, three tenacity. Those the couldn't find anyone that had four and rares, so I had to stick with that. Kind of mad about that. Two domains. Three domains. My bad. Really, really great cards. Just domain when domain gets MST by like um, arch fiend centric. This is just another. It's like it's a domain by itself, but it can it's a monster that could swing. So, I mean, it's just relatively great. Um, then we have two MSTs. This really wasn't bad because what happens is when I'm siding against the matchups, I take out one MST and put in double twin twister and the ignition. I take out the ignition and the MST because then instead of going for one for one, I'm going for um, two for practically. Um, one ignition, one for one, foolish, and return. Um, I was contemplating playing two for the YCS, but to be honest, one was just fairly good for all my matchups. Um, I won't bump this up to two, but um, that's practically what it is. As far as chop lining up, we have call, two prime, and three sanctums. Now, this card was this. That, this card is just broken. Like three sanctums is just really fair. Prime, it's really great, but this card. It made me do, I think I OTK like three times thanks to this card. Um, I'll talk about this card a lot because I had 39 cards and I just didn't know what the 40th card should be. I didn't know if I should put in a third Karaz just to break <laughs> pretty much with it. Or this card was essentially great in theory and also great in testing because there were a lot of times where I would just, like I told you, OTK, like bring on a boss monster. Or if I want to set up for an idiot play, like I'll just call, bring it back, bring out the idiots from the graveyard, or Karaz, pop these two for a free draw, or Karaz, target the siphon, pop it during my opponent's turn. It was just ridiculous in so many situations, and it, it, it played its part. So if there was any trap, all of these I would play next to the, the Sanctum, it would be call. And so unfortunately, I had to cite it a lot. But, um,. Like I said, the deck was mostly, I was more prepared for BA, Co um, Cosmos, and Draco Piles. But, um, like, because I believe those are my worst matchups. That are, you know, even, I don't really like regular Monarchs. But for the sideboard, um, two Flying Seas. Like, Edge's card, relatively almost every time I play against PK Fire, it was just really, really good. Um, two Ghost Ogres. That was, um, I was playing two Gamma Souls before, but I put in Ghost Ogre because playing against Draco Pal was just really an incentive. I wanted to stop it. And if I drew it, it did its job. There's a couple times I didn't draw I drew it and it was just dead. Um, instead of playing Vanity's Fiend, I played three Majesty's Fiend. Mm -hmm. This card is retarded in almost every matchup right now in the meta, post banless. And um, I keep signing in too, but if I really didn't see it that often, even with the return of the Monarchs, I put in the third one. And um, the, you'll see why I'm playing three in just a moment. But um, three in almost all my matchups. Didn't play any Cosmos at the YCS, so the one dead card in here was System Down. I didn't mind it, so. Um, Regeki, Dark Hole, just board wipes, you know, for the mirror match and um, anything non BA, because you don't want to Dark Hole. <laughs> Um, two twin twisters. Like again, I said the concept is take out MST and ignition in game two, because this is a lot better, and you can discard outlets. And <clears throat> most of the time when I drew this card, I drew Erebus, which was pretty free. Um, two forbidden chalices, really for the mirror match, because I don't have many ways. Like I feel like eight to nine cards in my deck that's not really suitable against the mirror match. So to really like take it out, it was just like Majesty's Fiends and Ghost Orbers. And this was just basically an extension, like if there was like anything that, for, cause I didn't really expect to play against P um, FT, Monarch FTK. So it was a risk I was taking. Um, so for Chalice did his job, but then basically that's why I was playing three, three of this, the Majesty's Fiend, the three. Cause, Escalation during my opponent's turn is just really free, especially when you play against BA. I only side this when I'm going first against BA because when you can tribute the Beatrice and then bring out a Majesty's Fiend, it's basically a three for one. So, 
Um, again, this was it was a great turnout, great YCS. Um, would I change anything about the deck? Probably there's a lot of changes I can make to it. But for YCS Providence, which is um, I'm 80 percent sure I might be going, I will not be playing my nice. <laughs> Oh nah, most likely I'm gonna test out BA, Cosmos, and probably performer powers and see what I can do. Cause the deck's not dead. Anyone that thinks the deck is dead, they're they're clearly wrong about that. But um preferably to see what's going on. Oh um also great shout out again to Pro Play Games. Their description will be on the below on the their link to their YouTube page will be on the description below. Um also shout out to Andrew Torres, come on Crooks, all the the Florida players that came out there and represented. Um also, just in, just stay positive. I'm also be opening a little video for the balanced reactions to some of our local players and see what's been going on. Um, also, we're gonna make an announcement that we'll be doing a lot more UB content, a lot more. Um, basically, you're gonna be seeing at least two to three uploads a week. We know we haven't been uploading a lot. There's a lot going on with kids and families that you know the team. We have our lives as well besides Yu Gi Oh. But um, that's all it. If you guys have any questions, feel free to just email us. We'll try to get back to you as quick as we can. Um, and just keep 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 supporting the community. If there's anything that you guys would like, like um, trying our deck ideas, anything that you would like to see, just put in the comment below and we'll reach out to you as fast as we can. Uh, this is your boy Roof signing off from Taste Gaming Satellite and also Pro Play Games. Remember. They're the best in software when it comes to foreign singles, sets, anything like that. The website is going to be on the description below. Remember to click that like button for it. For Team Relinquish and also Pro Play Games, and give them give a look at their YouTube page. Great content on there. And um, keep you in it up.